Basics of Radiotherapy. In this whiteboard video of our Basics of Radiotherapy series, we will discuss how radiotherapy works. A detailed written module and virtual patient case are available on learnoncology.ca. You may wish to open this and follow along with them. By the end of the video, you should understand the following objectives. Pause the video now to review them. How does radiation treat cancer? Imagine this, you shine a flashlight at a tumor. You remember from high school physics that visible light is a type of radiation. So does that mean visible light can also treat cancer? Absolutely not, because it's just light. Continue reminiscing high school and you'll remember that visible light is only one type of radiation on the electromagnetic spectrum. It is enough energy to give us light to read and see things, but not much more than that. X-rays and gamma rays are types of radiation with much higher energy on this spectrum. So much energy, in fact, that they can ionize atoms in their path. Ionization is when an atom loses a particle, most often an electron, and becomes charged. The ability to ionize atoms is important because it can disrupt biological molecules and potentially kill cells. This is the basics of how we use radiation to kill cancer cells. You may be wondering, how on earth do we produce this radiation? Broadly speaking, all radiation must come from a source. Visible light comes from the sun or your flashlight. Radio waves may come from your smartphone. But where do cancer-killing x-rays come from? X-rays for cancer treatment are commonly generated by a linear accelerator. In this machine, high-speed particles, often electrons, collide with a metal target and photons are released. This photon beam can then be directed towards a patient and their tumor. Electrons and protons are alternative radiation types to photons. They deliver ionizing energy with differing patterns that can also treat cancers. They are, however, less commonly used. Mechanism of action. How does radiation damage cancer cells? At the cellular level, radiation can cause direct DNA damage, or indirect DNA damage. Most of our current radiation techniques cause indirect DNA damage. This is when radiation contacts water around target cells to cause reactions that produce free radicals. Additional contact with nearby oxygen produces an even more toxic superoxide. These radicals in turn cause damage to the cell. Direct damage is less common. Heavier particles, like protons, rely on this form of damage. The goal of radiotherapy and other cancer treatments is to produce a double-strand break. This is when both strands of polynucleotides are broken at the same spot. This should understandably be harder for cancer cells to repair. Enough accumulation of these double-strand breaks will hopefully lead to cell death. It is easiest to cause a double-strand break when a cell is in its M phase of the cell cycle. This is when the chromosome is dividing. Cancer cells divide more often than normal cells, that is, their cell cycles repeat more frequently. This makes cancer cells more vulnerable to radiation than normal cells. Keep in mind, a tumor will contain thousands of cancer cells. If we gave a one-time, giant dose of radiation, not every cell would be in its M phase, and therefore not equally affected. To distribute damage, we break up the total dose of radiation into smaller amounts given over multiple days. This is called fractionation. This increases the chance of radiation catching a cell in its M phase and causing adequate DNA damage. You may be wondering what is happening to normal cells in the middle of all of this. Not surprisingly, normal cells are affected by radiation too and they may also be in their M phase leading to possible double strand breaks. Radiation therapy and other cancer treatments hinge on the principle that normal cells heal these defects better than cancer cells. Fractionation also allows normal cells to recover in between treatment fractions. An easy way to remember the fundamental mechanisms of radiation therapy is through the four R's, repair, repopulation, reassortment, and reoxygenation. Let's go through them now. Repair. Normal cells repair their DNA damage better than cancer cells. Fractionation of radiotherapy allows normal cells to repair themselves in between treatment fractions. 
Repopulation. Tumor cells can repopulate themselves if incompletely damaged. Each fractionation of radiation must cause more damage than a tumor cell's ability to repopulate. Concurrently, fractionation also allows normal cells to repopulate. Reassortment. Tumor cells are at different phases in the cell cycle at any given time. Each fractionation allows reassortment of tumor cells to be in the M phase and allows radiation to produce considerable DNA damage. Reoxygenation. Tumor cells farther away from the blood supply, such as in the center of a tumor, are more hypoxic. Most radiation damage is produced by indirect DNA damage through radicals, and oxygen is key in producing very toxic superoxide radicals. Fractionation causes oxygen-rich tumor cells to die off first, and previously hypoxic tumor cells to be reoxygenated. These cells will thus be more susceptible to radiation in the next fraction. This concludes our discussion on how radiotherapy works. Please visit learnoncology.ca for further information on this and other oncology topics. Thank you.